Welcome to Biomechanics Lab. This is going to be the first pre-lab lecture over what you guys did in the first week of school. This is going to be lecture A over chapter 1 concerning planes and axes of motion. All right, so here we have two uh, pictures of a person who is standing in anatomical position. Okay, so we often, when we're talking uh, medically or we're um, referring to parts of the body or where something is relative to other parts on the body, we refer to anatomical position. And in short, that's basically where feet together, toes pointing forward, um, facing forward, standing up straight with your arms by your side. And you'll notice one thing that's also very important is the palms of the hand are facing forward. Okay, and she's standing in both an anatomical position in both of these pictures right here. Okay, and we have here uh, some pieces of directional terminology. Now for right versus left, remember that that refers to the person that is in the anatomical position, not the person viewing them. So for example, her left side, that is her left side, not me looking at her. And then the right side is going to be her right side as well. So we always talk about those terms with respect to the person who's in that position, with respect to the subject. Okay. Now, we have a midline of the body, so this dashed white line is the midline. And if there's something that's closer to the midline, or near the midline, we would call that medial, and if it's further away from the midline, we'd call that lateral. So we could argue that one of the most medial landmarks would be the belly, belly button, or the umbilical region, okay? And something that would be lateral to that might be the edge of the hips right here, okay? So something like that. Uh, we could also say that the heart, which is going to be on, slightly on the left side, the heart would be more medial to the lung on that side. The lung is more lateral, the heart is more medial. Okay. Now, if we're talking about limbs, so whether it's the arms or the legs, we can talk about things being distal and proximal. Okay. So if we look at the insertion of that limb to the torso, so we can even look at this right here, or the shoulder region in the arm, if it's further away from the insertion to the torso, or we could just say further from the torso, it's more distal. If it's closer to that insertion point, it's going to be more proximal. So for example, if we were comparing the elbow and the hand, we would say the hand is more distal and the elbow is more proximal since the elbow is closer to the torso, whereas the hand is further away. We could also say that the ankle is more distal relative to the knee, which is more proximal. Okay. Now, if we're simply referring to something being closer to the head or further from the head or towards the feet, we can use superior and inferior respectively. Okay, so for example, if something is just higher up, we call it superior. If it's lower down, we call it inferior. Okay, fairly simple. So for example, we might say that the heart is superior to the umbilical region. Okay, and the umbilical region would be inferior to that. Okay. Typically, one thing that's important to understand is when we talk about positions on the limb, we typically are going to use proximal or distal, not superior or inferior. Now, when we're in anatomical position, we would say the hand is inferior, right? But suppose she lifted her arm up out of anatomical position to where her arm is like this. Well, now her hand is more superior to the elbow. In anatomical position, her hand is more inferior to the elbow. So depending on what position you're talking about, um, things can be superior or inferior. So for limbs, so the arms and the legs, we typically are going to use distal and proximal because, the, for example, the ankle is always distal to the knee. Okay, And we would say the knee is always proximal to the ankle, and that doesn't matter what position we're in. Okay. The last one is just going to be anterior and posterior. Posterior means towards the back side, and anterior means towards the front side. So for example, we might talk about the gluteus maximus muscle that's in the rear. It's going to be a posterior muscle with respect to, say, the rectus abdominis, which are the abdominal muscles, which would be more anterior. Okay. Now, let's take a look at some planes of uh, motion. Okay, so we have three planes here. These are the important ones. This plane right here, this is called a sagittal plane. A sagittal plane in picture A separates the body into left and right halves. So for example, the sagittal plane might say cut the two separate the two kidneys. We have a left kidney, we have a right kidney. 
okay? Um, assuming it's the mid-sagittal plane right through the midline, it separates the two lungs. We have a left lung and a right lung. So pretty much any part of the body that we have two of them, a left and a right, we have a sagittal plane that um, separates the two of them, okay? If we put it right uh, midway through the uh, face, it would separate the left and right eyes, okay? I think you get that point. Uh, this in B is a frontal plane. A frontal plane is going to separate the body into a front and back half. So for example, if I put it kind of right where it is, this particular frontal plane might separate the rectus abdominis in the abdominal region from the gluteus maximus on the posterior side. Okay, so frontal plane separates front and back halves. And then a transverse plane is always going to separate uh, the body into a top and bottom half. And you, you don't have to have the transverse plane right here. You can raise it up to the level of the head to look at the brain. You can lower it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be here. If we have a front, for example, a sagittal plane right here, but it's right on the midline, we call it a special name, a mid-sagittal plane. But I can have a sagittal plane that m moves over to either to the right his right, that is, or his left. Um, it doesn't have to be right on the midline. And the same thing goes for the frontal plane. I can move it forward or backwards, okay? Now, we also have uh, movements that occur in these planes, okay? And in general, when we think about a movement and what plane it occurs in, okay? But we have to imagine, let's take our arms, for example. That's probably the best example. If you had paint all over your arm, Okay, if you had, if you covered, saturated your arm in paint, and you did that particular motion, um, which plane are you painting? Basically, is what we're saying. So let's imagine, um, let's imagine, say, a a bicep curl. So if we think about anatomical position, we've got our arms right down by our sides, and you can do it. In, you can do it while you're watching this. You can just do a bicep curl, a flexion and an extension. Okay. And if your arm is painted and you were painting something right next to your arm, you'd be painting a frontal plane. Imagine, see, this arm is going to move through the frontal plane right there if we do a flexion and an extension. Okay? So, for example, when we're talking about a sagittal plane, typically this is going to uh, promote movements such as flexion and extension. Okay? Now, if you, instead of, uh, you know, bending your elbow, if we just move the whole arm up, so... So that's flexion and extension of the of the shoulder. That would be if like you wanted to reach up in front of you and grab a, a plate off of a shelf in your kitchen. Um, that's also flexion and extension because we'd be moving the whole arm in the in the sagittal plane. Okay. Now, if we talk about movements, say in the frontal plane, we're talking about abduction versus adduction. So those are movements, say, say you're standing right next to somebody. So you're both facing forward and you want to move your arm up to put around their back. That's going to be an abduction. You're moving your arm away from um, your midline and you're, you're doing that to put your arm around your friend, right? Um, that movement, you can see he's going to move his arm up like this. It's going to move in the frontal plane, okay? Now, one thing that's really important, and we'll talk about this in another chapter in the next week, um, when, whenever we have, typically we talk about flexion being a decrease in the angle of a joint, and extension is an increase in the angle. Um, it's really important to understand that when we talk about flexion and extension, those are for things, for movements that occur only in the sagittal plane. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to talk about moving my arm in the frontal plane like this, even if I was increasing the angle of the joint, I wouldn't call that extension because it does not occur in the sagittal plane. If you have an increase or decrease of the angle of a joint in the frontal plane, those are going to be called abduction and adduction respectively. So abduction would be moving your arm away from the midline. Adduction would be moving it back. Okay, that's important to understand. Which plane you're in, which of these two determines whether it's flexion or extension for sagittal or abduction and adduction for frontal. And typically when we talk about movement in a transverse plane, we're talking about something that's a rotation. So if you imagine, uh, you got this transverse plane right, right there, if you imagine basically standing on your feet and twisting your body to where you, you, your leg stands still but your torso rotates either to the either clockwise or counterclockwise, say you wanted to turn to look at something, that rotation is occurring in this transverse plane. So generally, transverse plane only permits rotations, and that's what we're going to more or less assume here. Now, 
there's a couple, a few slides here that have the uh, body landmarks. So for example, uh, these two slides right here, those are going to have uh, the various names of the regions of the body. So for example, if we're talking about a lot of times we say, oh, your, your cheeks have turned red because you're blushing. Well, most people just would commonly refer to that as the cheek. But the specific region name is called the buccal region. Okay. Another example, if we're talking about the eyes, that's actually the orbital region. Okay. The specific scientific name is the orbital region. Another example that Doug brought up in, in class was if you're talking about the ribs, those are the costals or the costal region. And so we have a bunch of specific, we, uh, common names, but they all have a specific scientific name. And you have this slide right here, and then there's another slide also saying the same thing. For example, if I'm talking about my kneecap, that's called the patella region, okay, or, or the bone is the patella. If I'm talking about the deltoid, that's one you might not have heard of. It's called the omis, for example, okay? And don't worry about memorizing all these for now. Um, I think I have one question on the quiz um, that was over something Doug went, in went over in class with respect to uh, this, okay? But nothing crazy. This is basically showing the same things as on these two slides, except it's a, it's a diagram, a visual diagram that shows where things are. For example, um, if we're talking about the chin region, that scientific or specific name is called the mental region. I think I mentioned eye region, that's the orbital region. Okay. Um, if we're talking about, let's see a good one, let's talk about the hips, that's the coxal region, or coxal region, whatever you want to call it. And we can have, say, the, the kneecap would be the patella region right here. Okay. So probably before you come to class in the third week, I would say take a look at this slide, take a look at this. Uh, you don't have to have, you know, be able to spit all of these out, but at least be familiar enough with them to where if I said something like, um, which region corresponds to the ribs? You could reason through a multiple choice question that would say costal. If I said, which, which part is the anterior neck? The specific name is the throat, and those will be in the form of a multiple choice question. All right. So hopefully um, this gave you a little bit of sense of, of planes of motion. And in the next video, we're going to go over bones. Thank you for watching this.